This is a Monte Carlo simulation in which we simulate or flipping a coin, zero or one, and we set it at a 1% chance that we have a one head or tail. So we put in here a formula, and I did that for 1000 cells. And the formula is if a random number between 0 and 1 is less than or equal to C1, which is the 1% level, then put a 1 in there, otherwise a 0. Count if, in column A, if there is a 1. In this case I had 8 situations. 10 times head or tail, etc. Then we are going to rerun that for 1000 times flipping a coin at the 2% level, 3% level, etc. That we will do with a data table. And then very soon we are going to calculate here what the minimum value is that we have found so far after each run and what the maximum value is. There we need some memory. So how are we going to do this for different levels? We use a data table. Here you just type 1% to 10% or as far as you want to go. And then highlight that in the top that has a formula in it. And create a data table. Data. What if analysis. Data table. And all you have to say what is the row input cell and what is the column input cell. No row input cell, but the column input cell is that cell C1. And at the moment you click OK, you will see that it does that for different percentages. This is at the 10% level. We would expect some 100 cases. So each time I press F9, it will oscillate around 100, lower, higher. That is randomness, of course. Now we are going to implement a memory for this. I want to find here what is the minimum we have found so far for the 2% level and the maximum for the 2% level. And we do that for the rest too. Uh, in order to do so, we need a formula that is going to refer to itself. And the formula is going to look like this. In H2 it says if H2 equal 0, then we want F2, the percentage we have, the numbers we have found. Otherwise, if F2 is less than H2, we want F2, otherwise H2. Do you see that there is an internal circular reference to itself? That means that the machine, that Excel, is going to tell you, sorry, I can't do this. There is a circular reference. So what we have to do is we have to turn iterations on. File. Options. Formulas. And make sure that you enable iterative calculations. Usually you don't want that, but in this case you would. I'm going to set the maximum to 1000. I'm going to cancel it. I did that already. So now we are going to put in here a formula. This one for the min, and that one for the max. I did that already, so I put that formula already here. So here it is. I'm going to copy that one, so I don't have to type it. And I put them in all these cells. Control Enter. And these are the values we found. As you notice that certain cells get a background color. I did that with conditional formatting. I will show very soon how. Let's do the max value. Copy it. Control C. Escape. I want to put that formula in here. I do that for the first cell. And then Control Enter to do it for all the selected cells. And each time I press F9, you will see that sometimes the memory changes because there is, they, it found a new minimum or maximum value. So what did we do in here? That was conditional formatting, home, conditional formatting. Uh, when you do this from scratch, you want a new rule. I did that already. 
So I have already this rule that if the cell value is equal to F2, that is this cell. But because we want to do that for two columns, we have to lock the F and not lock the 2. So string F equals string F2. And then we give it a certain format, a certain fill color. I did that already. So it is all done. So each time we get a value that is new, like in this case 69 is the max at this point. But when I run it again, that 69 will probably disappear because in its color, because now it's 64 here. But this one is a new max value. And that is a new max value, and that one. So I keep doing this, and in the long run, you will not see any background colors anymore, because we have found the entire range of min and max. See, like in this situation. But maybe if I keep going, randomness, then it will pop up every once in a while. But that frequency will go downhill very soon. This is an example of a data table with a memory. For the memory we need iterations. Simulations are very powerful, very creative, and sometimes very fun. If you want to know more about simulations, this one is not in my book. So this is a new one, but here are many more in gambling, in statistics, in genetics, in financial situations, etc. And there are also iterations that help you to do a lot of things. You can find the book at genesispc.com and it has 80 different simulations. It will be fun for you, but it will also give you ideas how to do your own simulations. Good luck!